In today's video, we're gonna be breeding bedders. I wanted to get straight into it and show you guys exactly what you're gonna need for this project. So if you come on over here, you can see we've already started to set up everything that we're gonna to need to do this project today. We've got four different containers here and in today's video, we're gonna be breeding four different types of bedders. I'm gonna show you guys the bedders in a second, but what I wanted to emphasize with this video is that you can pretty much do this with anything lying around your house. If you don't have the materials to do this project lying around your house, I'll be very, very surprised because all you're gonna need is basically everything you've seen here. So we've got four different types of setups here. If you come on over, you can see that we have the tubs that we've originally done this in before. So these are just like the four liter Kmart tubs. I've talked about them plenty. We're gonna do a pair in there. I've got a styrofoam container here. We're gonna do a pair in this. We've got another styrofoam container here. This one's a bit wider. And we also just have a plain bucket. Now, in every single container, you can see I've already added a divider. So these are very, very easy to make. Basically, we've just taken a bottle and we've just cut the bottom and the top off. And we've got this divider here. So we're gonna be putting our females in there. And I've just added a piece of bubble wrap. That's all we're gonna need. There's a few other optional things that you can add to this, but you don't have to do that. I'll be adding them just for the sake of it, but you definitely don't need to do it. And this is the bare minimum that you're gonna to need to do this project today. So we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna get straight into it and we're gonna just start filling these tubs up because it's very, very straightforward. So I'm using aged tank water. The pH will be about 7.2. This will actually come down because I'm gonna add some different leaves to these tanks. The leaves are gonna help bring the pH down, but normally you're gonna aim for that seven pH. And please, if you're a beginner, don't worry. Like most of the time, people's tap water is gonna be close to this. So it's not gonna impact it too much. Really good community tank water will work. Hardness doesn't really matter too much. The hardness in here will probably be about 200 parts per million, so this seems gross. I like live in this fish room, so I don't really care anymore. We'll just go ahead and fill up all these tubs. I normally like to put about 15 centimeters of water in each container. Sometimes it'll be a bit more shallow, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've just filled these all up with water. You don't need to do these extra steps, but I'm gonna do this. We're gonna go ahead and add some Indian almond leaves to these. So these are really, really good. They're just botanicals. You can get them online. The reason I add these is they're gonna to help to obviously bring the pH down, but they also have lots of antibacterial and antifungal properties in them. And as I'm gonna show you in a second, the breeding process for bettas isn't that simple. It's a really easy process, but the bettas are gonna beat each other up. And the more antifungals and antibacterials we can add to the water, the better, because it's gonna mean that there's less of a risk of infection and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is just break off a leaf and put it in here. This is just kind of like a bonus thing that I like to do. You definitely don't need to do this. I would recommend it, but if you're too lazy and you just wanna do it with a bucket like this, and you just wanna have like your divider in there and just a piece of styrofoam, go for it, I don't care. That's up to you. Just add a little piece in each one. And that is the setup done. I'm serious, that's it. That's all we're gonna to need to do. So what we're gonna do now is I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys the pairs that I picked out and we'll talk about conditioning. So I actually did select out all of these bedders, actually not all of them, three pairs of the bedders in a previous video. So I'll link that up in the top right hand corner. I got to pick out of 200 different bedders, which was really a treat. And today we've got quite a few interesting pairs. And I'm really like really excited to see what we get. So the first pair, this isn't a pair I actually picked out, but I played around with these in the past and it didn't really work out, but this is a yellow Hellboy pair. So what you can see here is we have a male. This is a beautiful male. You can see he's got some fantastic color. So like a nice little yellow undertone, the blue rim, and that's kind of like that platinum top on it. I don't know what kind of color that is, but he's really good. So he's gonna be going with this female, which is a very good looking female. That's our yellow Hellboy female. Look at that. We're gonna be crossing those two together, so we'll do yellow Hellboy cross yellow Hellboy. The second pair I have is very, very interesting and very cool. I'm super excited to see if these guys breed. So you can see our male here. Now this is a crown tail male platinum better. He's nothing too crazy, but he's a little bit different from what I'd normally select. You can see how beautiful this male is. Great fins, he's been super active, and what we're gonna be crossing him with is very interesting. He's gonna actually be getting crossed with this female. So look at her. She is a fantastic looking better. So different to any other kind of better. She's a pink, kind of multicolored, interesting looking better. 
So I'm interested to see what kind of fry we get out of them. The third pair is a pretty classic KFS pair. We're going with a koi cross. So we've got this beautiful galaxy koi female here. She's a very good looking fish. Lots of red, black, blue, amazing looking fish. She's gonna be getting crossed with this absolutely stunning long fin koi male. Great coloration and he's been super active, super healthy looking as well and yeah, it's gonna be an interesting cross. And finally, I do have a treat for you guys, something very, very interesting. We're gonna be doing a pure black and a pure white fish cross. So, I don't think we're gonna get any gray fish, but here we have a jet black male, just a normal half moon. He's a very, very dark fish that's very hard to record. And we're gonna be crossing him with this platinum Dumbodia female. She's just your standard platinum, kind of white colored female. So that's gonna be the fish we're gonna be breeding today. Now, I really quickly wanted to talk about conditioning because it is important to condition your fish because what we're gonna be doing when we're breeding our bettas is we're gonna be getting a male and a female. We're gonna be introducing them to each other, letting the pair kind of get familiar. Now, you can see all these fish don't have dividers. They're all kind of in the mood to breed because they've been looking at each other for the past couple of days. A lot of people, what they might wanna do is throw two bettas next to each other, let them look at each other for half the day, separate them for the other half. But the key, like the absolute key to having success breeding bettas is food. You have to feed them high protein, live foods. You can get away with feeding them granulated, high protein foods, but in my opinion, there's nothing really that beats live worms. I love to feed mine live black worms and I'll do that for quite a few days until the females are really plump. Once the females are ready, they're gonna let you know they're ready. If you come look at this dumbo eared female, you'll see that little white spot will come out. So we'll wait for her to get in the right position. But there's a little white spot that comes out that's underneath her abdomen. Once that comes out, it's go time. Hers is out quite a lot. That indicates to me that she's ready to breed. So what we're gonna do is tonight, we're gonna introduce the pairs into these containers. And then tomorrow morning, so I think it's like 5 p.m. now. Tomorrow morning, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the dividers out. We're gonna let the male and the female interact. Hopefully we get some eggs. If it doesn't happen, we'll just repeat the process and we kind of just do that until we get some eggs. So let's go ahead and add some males to these containers. So we'll go ahead and get all of our males. One here, this will be the crown tail pair. And then we'll get our Hellboy. Kind of want to try him in the bucket. And for the main prize, we'll do the black one and this big wide one here. We'll go ahead and grab the females too. The koi will go with the koi down here. This one will go with crown tail. Yellow Hellboy obviously over here with the yellow Hellboy. Gonna get a little platinum. I'm super excited. I probably haven't done this in about 11 months. So I'm actually really, really keen to get some eggs. So what we're gonna do is I'll show you guys in each tub how I set this up. Super easy, you guys should all be able to follow it. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our male. I want you guys to note that the water in here is basically the same as the water in there, so you don't really have to worry about acclimation. We'll go ahead and take this male. I might just scoop him out and put him in here. There we go. And we're gonna take our female, get her out too. And we'll put her in here in the divider. So she can see the male but they can't hurt each other and they can't interact yet. We're gonna move this here because what they're gonna do, this is really, really cool. Betters, what they do is a male will build what we call a bubble nest. What he'll do is he'll form a big nest of bubbles up on the top of the water column and he's gonna entice the female to come over underneath that bubble nest. They're gonna wrap around each other, embrace each other and then they're gonna drop a ton of eggs. The male will go pick up the eggs, put them in the bubble nest and take care of them until they hatch. So that's why we have this piece of bubble wrap here, because he's probably gonna start his bubble nest under there. We'll go ahead and do the rest of our pairs. Nope, oh, she fell in there anyways. There we go. Jet black male, and then we'll get the white female. What a beautiful fish. Oh, she has to go in there, that's right. And finally, the yellow hellboys. So there's the male, look at that. And the female, beautiful. Okay, so we've just introduced all the pairs. They're all interacting really well. I'll go around with my camera and show you guys exactly what's happening in here. But I'm really, really excited to see what happens. I really quickly wanted to say a few things. So I know I'm gonna get asked this, so I'm just saying it before I get asked. No, we don't need a filter because this is only temporary. There's such a small amount of fish in these containers that 
it seriously does not matter. You don't need a filter. If I was going to do this for a few weeks, I'd probably get a filter, but that's never what happens when you breed betters. The second thing I know I'm going to get asked, how do I feed the betters when they're in the containers? The answer is you don't. Just leave them. Their only focus right now is breeding. Betters can actually go about a week without eating pretty easily, and I don't ever do that to my betters, but they're not going to be thinking about eating right now. All they're going to be concerned about is breeding, and feeding them is just going to confuse them. So I'm not going to be thinking about feeding these guys at all. Other than that, what we're going to do is cover these up. That way, they're not going to be able to jump out overnight. Tomorrow morning, I'll come in probably like 10 a.m. The males should have built a nice, beautiful bubble nest. I'll show you guys that. And then we'll go take the dividers out, let the pairs interact. Hopefully, we get some breeding, and that's it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, and hopefully, we have some success. Okay, so it's now the next morning, and already a ton of stuff has started to happen. So if we come and have a look in some of these containers, you can see that we have some bubble nests being built. So it's not too obvious here, but underneath that leaf is actually a bubble nest. So the yellow hellboys have started to build a bubble nest. You can see the male's head sticking out there. We haven't got too much bubble nest building here with the jet black and the white female, but I'm sure that soon they will have a bubble nest. Here with the crown tail, you can see he's built a nice big thick bubble nest up here in the top right hand corner. So that's really good to see. And finally, over here in the coys, you can also see this male's got a huge bubble nest right here. So what we're going to be doing is releasing these females and seeing whether we get any breeding. So the way we do this is simply come along, take out that divider and let the pair interact. So you can see they're going to start interacting. We'll go ahead here and take out this pair. Over here with the jet black, we'll take them out. And finally, we'll take out the yellow hellboys and let them have a play. All right, so let's see what happens here. I'll keep you guys updated and see whether we get any spawning. Okay, so it's now the afternoon and I've already gone through and had a look, but as you can see, if we come down in here, we have a look in this bubble nest. This is the yellow hellboys, obviously. There aren't any eggs in here. So there are no eggs in any of the bubble nests in any of the containers yet. Now, this is okay. Like I was kind of expecting this to happen because this is what normally happens with bettas. Sometimes it might take one or two attempts or just a little bit of time with the bettas interacting before they actually get down to spawning. So you can see if we come over here to the black better nest, we move him, you can see he's there and the female's hiding. Now she's just been hiding under the leaves and that's why we want these leaves because it just provides a bit of refuge for them. But these leaves are fantastic for them to go and hide underneath when they're you know, not in the mood to spawn. So what we're gonna be doing is it's now kind of like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave all the bettas in these containers, but simply what we're gonna do is go ahead and just grab our little dividers. We'll just put the female back in her divider. So she can't be hurt anymore but that male can still work away on his bubble nest and what we'll do is we'll just re-release him in the morning. And then what we'll do is we'll cover them all up and we'll leave them till tomorrow morning and hopefully that's when we're gonna get our spawn. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it's now the next morning and we're gonna go ahead and reintroduce all the pairs. So we'll just take the dividers out and we'll see what happens today. All right, so we'll see what happens. We'll cover them all up and hopefully we get some spawning. Okay, well, it's now the second afternoon and we still do not have any spawns in any of these containers. It's getting a little bit frustrating, but this is something that's kind of to be expected with better breeding. As you can see, a lot of our females just don't seem keen and that's okay because we're still gonna get to spawn them hopefully. But what I'm gonna do is take an opportunity to show you guys what I do in a situation like this where things kind of aren't working the way that we want them to and what to do to recondition the fish and actually get them to spawn. So what we're going to be doing is taking all the pairs out of these containers, draining the water and then we're going to be resetting the pairs up and I'll show you guys exactly what I do. Alrighty, so I've just taken out all of the pairs and I've reset them up back in their containers. Now, I'm doing something a little bit differently and I'm gonna show you guys how to condition these properly. 
because obviously some of these fish just weren't conditioned and that's why we've had a little bit of trouble getting them to spawn. So what you can see I've gone ahead and done is put them in their containers, but now I've added these dividers. So you can see these dividers here, what they're doing is stopping the fish from being able to look at each other. And what this is gonna do is simulate basically introducing them. So what we're gonna do is keep the pairs in their pairs. So you can see we've got the crown tail and the pink one there, vice versa, the koi's here, and the other two pairs are up here. What I'm gonna do is every day when I come in in the morning, I'm gonna introduce the pairs for about an hour to an hour and a bit. What I'm gonna do is just take out these dividers and that's gonna allow the fish to look at each other and interact and the male will start building bubble nests and the female will get excited. And then after that two hours, I'm just gonna add these dividers back. Exactly like that. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to continue to feed these fish lots of black worms. So you can see this female here is snacking on some black worms. So are all the other fish. And these are gonna fill up the fish with a lot of protein and help them to develop eggs and really get in the mood. We're gonna do this for about two days. And then after two days, we'll try and introduce them again and see if they spawn. Well, it's been a few more days now and I've been conditioning our betters. So if we come down and have a look, you'll see some of these females have really plumped up a bit. So that female has been like getting much, much bigger. So is this girl here and her ovipositor does seem to be extruding a little bit more. So keep looking around. You see this female is definitely full of eggs. Look at her. And our little hellboy better down the end here also seems to be a little bit bigger. So what we're gonna do is go reset the tubs back up and we'll see whether we get any spawns. Hopefully this reconditioning works. Okay, so the pairs are all reintroduced. You can see here we got the yellow hellboys. That female is massive, like she's super full of eggs, hopefully. Over here we've got the jet black and the white female. Some pretty good behavior here. And we've got the pink and the crown tail. And finally we have the koi. So what we're gonna do is leave these guys for the rest of the afternoon, come back in the morning and see if we get some spawns. So fingers crossed we do. Okay, so now the next morning and we're back and you can see all of our fish have built their bubble nests. It's bubble nests in every container. So we're gonna give this the final test and see if we can't get some spawns today. So. I'm really eager to get some eggs from all of these fish. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove these dividers. We'll see whether these females wanna start spawning. Okay, so it's now the afternoon and we're back. And if we lift up some of these lids, you can see that we actually have had some eggs laid. So over here in the black and white bucket, you can see there is a mountain of eggs in this bubble nest. The male is telling the female to go away, she's done her job, and we're gonna take that female out now. If we come over here though, the other three containers, unfortunately do not have any eggs yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the females in here and try again. I'm literally just gonna leave them, I'm not even gonna put the divider back in. I'll leave them overnight and see whether we get more eggs. I'm so, 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 so happy to see the massive amount of eggs in here. So what we'll do, we'll go grab a cup, get a bit of water, grab out the female, put her in here, and she's all done. So we'll just cover this one up and we'll let him hatch out those eggs. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty, so it's now the next morning and I have more good news. So if we come on over to this Koi Better container you can see in this bubble nest we do have eggs they're gonna be a little bit more difficult to see basically in the middle there you can see there's just a ton of white little dots those are actually the eggs inside of that bubble nest so we're gonna go ahead and remove this female and we're gonna let this koi male continue to raise these eggs over here in the crown tail better tank I don't think we're gonna have any breeding yet I'm gonna keep trying with these guys and see if I can't get a spawn but nothing's really happened so far However, our Jet Black Better is doing a really good job taking care of his eggs. You can see they are all in this bubble nest. There's actually a massive amount of them in here, so that's really good to see. And then over here in the Yellow Hellboys, we still haven't had a spawn yet. There is a little bit of aggression, but I'm not really too worried about it. I'm just gonna keep these guys together and same with the Crown Tails and see what happens. 
So it's now the following day and I'm gonna give you guys an update on the better breeding. More really good news has happened overnight. I guess we'll start off with the really good news. If we come over to this crown tail better tank with the pink better, you can see she's quite skinny and if we have a look in this bubble nest, there are eggs. So they have spawned, so we're gonna remove that female. Here you can get a really good view of some of those eggs. Hopefully he does a really good job raising these ones up, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm actually really surprised these guys spawned. They did not look like they were gonna spawn. The other really good news is over here with the jet black male, you can see that the eggs have actually started to hatch. So you can see all those little tiny baby bedders there inside of the bubble nest. All those little eyes, you can see some of them swimming around. How exciting is that? Look at all those tiny little itty bitty eyes. Our male koi better is still laboring away and I'm not too sure whether these eggs are actually fertilized. We're gonna wait and see, maybe tomorrow they'll hatch, but he seems very like distressed by me doing this. So I'll leave him be. Finally, over in our yellow Hellboy better container, we still haven't had a spawn yet, but the pair seems pretty receptive. So they might still breed. I'm gonna leave them in here for probably another day unless there's some negative behavior and see whether we do get some eggs. That's some really, really good news happening over here with the better breeding. It's been another 24 hours now, and if we have a look in some of our containers, you'll see what's going on. So our yellow hellboys still haven't bred, and what I'm gonna do is give up on this attempt. I'm gonna condition that female up a little bit more, and I will breed these off camera. All three of the other bedders did spawn. So our koi has actually got some little hatchlings. Our crown tail has some eggs that look like they're gonna hatch, and our jet black better has a ton of little wrigglers. This is the jet black male, and you can see all of those tiny little eyes within the bubble nest. Those are all little baby bedders. Look at them all. So he's doing a fantastic job taking care of all of them. I'm not too sure how many there are in here. The crown tail male also has some eggs in his bubble nest. They haven't hatched yet, but they'll probably hatch within the next 24 hours. They're a little bit hard to see because they are so white, but there are eggs in there and hopefully they do hatch out. And finally the koi male also has little fry swimming around. You can see them all there. Tons of little koi's. This has been quite a big success. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these guys for now and when the fry start free swimming, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to feed them and how to care for the fry and get them up to a size where you can throw them into another tank. This is very, very easy to do. It's just all about conditioning your bedders and getting them to actually want to breed. And once you've done that, it's very easy. We've got hundreds of little bedders on the way. I can't wait to grow all these guys out and see what kind of colors we get. So it's been another 24 hours and I'm finally gonna to get to show you guys how to start raising up your little baby bedders. So if you come on over to our first container, you'll see this is the jet black male and all of his baby bedders have started to kind of leave the bubble nest. Some of them are still on the floor, which is kind of to be expected but some of them are up the top of the body of water and they're all swimming. These ones are a day older than the koi bedders and I'm actually gonna start feeding these guys today. You can see there is a massive amount of them in here and when they reach this stage, like once they've started to leave the bubble nest, the male bedder's kind of done his job and you can remove him. So we're gonna remove this jet black male today. Over here in the crown tail bedder tank, you can see that his eggs have actually started to hatch as well. So there are lots of little eyeballs in here. They haven't started free swimming, so he's still rearing these little guys up. These will be free swimming in about a day. But over here in our koi better tank, you can see the massive amount of fry that are in here. I mean massive. There is probably a good 300 fry in this container. You can see them all up the back corners there. If I just tap this bubble nest a little bit. Look at that, that is insane. I've never seen that many fry in a bubble nest before. So we're also gonna remove this male and we're gonna try and give these guys a little feeding. So go ahead and remove this guy. There he goes. Then I'll go ahead and grab, oh my gosh, there are so many babies in this bubble nest, wow. Okay, we'll grab this guy out. So this is the jet black better spawn. Look at the insane amount of fry that we've got from him. I'm gonna be overloaded with bedders. I can't take any more spawns of these because there is gonna be a ridiculous amount of fry. Look at that, they're, they're just everywhere. They are everywhere. Even over here with the koi bedders, I know that these guys aren't free swimming yet, but like, come on, that is so many fish. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some live plants to this little box here 
and this box here to help keep the water clean and also add some microorganisms and some resting spots for our baby bedders. I absolutely love using this. What this is is just Java moss. Java moss is a great plant for bedders. They absolutely love it. It's so good for them to swim in and it's going to have a ton of infusoria for these guys to nibble on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a clump of this and like pry it out quite a bit and drop it in here. Over here as well. Look at that. You might also be wondering what the heck are we going to feed these tiny, tiny fry because in my opinion they're a little bit too small to eat baby brine shrimp on the first day. I like to feed them an in-between food before I feed them baby brine shrimp to get the most success raising the babies. What I personally like to use is this. This is just literally boiled egg yolk and this is freshly boiled so you're going to want this stuff real fresh. What I do, I'll take about this much tank water, so this is just aged tank water. I then grab about this much egg yolk, so not too much, just a little bit, and I come and bring it into our cup. And I literally just mash it up into a milk. It's like this kind of milky water. Not too much, you don't need it to be like insanely fine, but until it looks like that, it mushes up really easy in the water. And then literally what you're gonna do is feed this liquid to your fry. So you're gonna come along, just get a little pipette, and you're just gonna go along the top of the water like this and just drop little drops all throughout the container. And what's gonna happen is the bed is gonna eat this as it's falling through the water. And it's a really good high protein food. It's cheap, everyone should have some of this. And you're gonna do this twice or three times a day if you can. Now the thing with this egg yolk is it is gonna dirty up your water. So that's why we've added a bit of this java moss. Do not overfeed this stuff because it's gonna really dirty up the water. What we're gonna to do to combat this is we're gonna add extra water and do water changes in these containers to help keep these bedders really really healthy because the water parameters and the water conditions are here are really like so important. If we have really poor water we're going to have really bad quality bedders and bedders that have issues so it's really important that we keep the water as clean as possible. So that's how you feed them. I'm going to keep you guys updated with their progress and I'll show you guys when I start feeding them baby brine shrimp and yeah I'm just super excited about today. And we're back at the better breeding and you can see if we come and have a look inside of these boxes all of our fry are really doing fantastic so there's not too many in this jet black box there's about 200 of them in here which is actually quite a lot when I think about it if we come over here to the crown tail there's about a hundred of them in here so you can see them all there there's a few there if we come on over to the koi tank there's probably about 500 little baby bedders within this container. It's actually ridiculous how many there are in here. As we kind of reach the end of this better breeding project, a lot of other people on YouTube would kind of just leave you here and wouldn't really give you the full understanding on how to raise these fry up. So since I last saw you, I have started feeding these fry baby brine shrimp in addition to some micro worms. So I'm not gonna talk about that now, it'd take too long. Go inform yourself on both of those live foods to have the most success with these. So I'm feeding egg yolk, brine shrimp and micro worms to all of these fish and they're doing really well. They're on about day three of free swimming now and I don't want to keep these fry in these containers for too much longer. What we're going to start seeing happen is the water quality is really going to diminish and once this starts happening we really can stunt our fry and have a lot of issues. So we want to get them out of these containers as quick as possible and into some kind of form of grow out container. So in the past, I've used things like breeder boxes and my fry system to raise these guys up in really small, confined spaces. And since then, I've actually been doing a lot of experimenting with raising fry, and I've been experimenting with using larger bodies of water. I've found that those fry systems don't work the best for some of these different types of fry. And what we're gonna be using is just literally a four foot tank to grow these guys out. If you come on over here, this is a three foot tank. And what I mean is I'm going to be putting all of the fry directly into their final grow out tank. The way I've been doing this is you can see I've lowered the water down really, really far. So this is about like an inch and a half of water. And what we're going to be doing is leaving the water at this level and adding all of our fry to it. So they're going to have a lot more space to swim around, but not too much space that they're not going to be able to find their food because, well, it's a really, really fine puddle kind of in this tank. So there's a lot more water volume without making it too hard for them to find their food. So what we're gonna be doing is adding a batch of fry to this tank and then feeding them on the top of the water. So we'll go around the top of the water. I'll show you guys exactly how to feed them. We'll add a ton of live plants in here as well. 
and basically simulate what they would have in the wild. I found this to work really well. As the fries start getting bigger, I just start slowly filling up the water a little bit higher until it obviously gets up to the top level. Then they're on like a normal water change schedule. But the benefit of having them in here is, firstly, the large volume of water means they're not gonna stunt really easily. It also means that the live food lasts longer in here and I don't have to feed them as much because there's just all kinds of different rotifers and little live critters in here for them to eat. And it's just easy. I don't have to constantly move them from tank to tank during their grow out stages. I just put them in here, leave them till the end and then pull them out. So what I've done is I'm gonna be putting the crown tail batch in here because this is the smallest batch. So this is a three foot tank. I've also over on the other side of the fish room emptied out two more tanks. So this is another four foot tank. In here you can see I've labeled that we're gonna be putting the koi's in here. And it's a very, very thin layer of water in here. And then finally up here, we're gonna be putting the black betters. This is another thin layer. This is just a four foot tank, but it's a little bit shorter, so it'll suit the smaller batch of fry. So we'll go ahead, we'll add the fry, and I'll show you everything you need to do to make sure these fry all get up to adulthood. So I'm gonna be using this tank as an example of how to set up one of these. So really easy, we're gonna take all of our betters, and I think I'm just gonna slowly pour them in with a cup. They are pretty hardy, they're very easy to raise in my opinion, so you don't really need to worry too much about them splashing around. So we've added all the fry to the tank, now what we're gonna do is just add as many live plants as we can. So we'll go ahead, we'll just add a ton of Java moss clumps in here and spread them all out. And these are obviously gonna give the guys a bunch of little tiny itty bitty critters to eat and places to hide and keep the aquarium really stable. And that's basically it. So all the fry are gonna do really, really well in here. The Java moss will help oxygenate the water and they're gonna do absolutely fine in here. So I've just gone ahead, added all the fry to all the containers. So we're over here at the koi tank and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do a feeding. So what I'm gonna be feeding to these guys is the egg yolk for the first about a week, just to make sure that every single fry in here is getting a bite to eat. I'm also gonna be feeding some live microworms. That'll stay alive throughout the day, so I'm gonna feed that quite heavily. And we're also gonna feed a small amount of baby brine shrimp. So we're gonna be using the baby brine shrimp in small amounts until they're definitely big enough to eat them. The way you're gonna feed this tank with every single one of those foods is get a small pipette and just come around and just drop it like you're mowing a lawn again in all the different corners of the tank to try and disperse it as well as you can. This way, every single better in this tank will have an opportunity to have a bite to eat. So just small amounts all around the container, or I guess I should say the tank. Anyways, I think we're gonna wrap the video up here, guys. I mean, I've taken you through the whole process of getting the adults to getting the eggs and hatching out the eggs and now we're even getting the eggs into their final, I guess, grow out stage. Okay, so I guess to finish this project off, I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on how all the fry are doing. Now, it has been another few days and the fry have put on quite a little bit of size. They're not massive, but they've all started to eat baby brine shrimp as you can see. So the Koi's, the Jet Blacks, and the Crown Tails are all doing fantastic. I haven't had any die-offs. I might have had maybe one fry die-off, but I'm not too sure why that was. And that's out of like nearly a thousand fish. So you can see that this method for raising the fry is insanely effective, and it would be even more effective if I fed them more often. At the moment, I'm limited to two feedings during the day, and that seems to be working really well. So having all that Java moss in there really does help a lot for them to have constant hiding spaces and heaps of food, but that's pretty much going to be it. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please, 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 please leave a like down below. It really helps these videos out to get discovered. And I'll see you in the next one.